What's up, people of the internet? Jacob here, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, also welcome. I love all things dual sports, adventure bikes, pretty much everything on two wheels. So if so that sounds like something that you're interested in, please like and subscribe. All right, so today I have a new to me 2019 BMW R1250 GS HP behind me, as well as my 2008 GS um, and my 2003 1150 GS Adventure. I wanted to give you a quick little walk around of this new bike, um, uh, why I keep buying GSs over the years, and uh, what my thoughts are on the new bike. Stay tuned. All right, so let's start with the original, the 2003 BMW GS Adventure. As you can see, I like to I like to crash on the right side if I'm going to crash. So anyway, this bike is the heaviest out of all of them. It is air cooled, and it's coming in around 600 pounds. This bike has. I've had a ton of fun on it, but it does feel extremely, extremely top heavy. And it is about 60 pounds heavier than the newer version, this 2008 over here. So the one thing I will call out if you're looking at these older GSs is that the uh, servo braking system is terrible on them. It's also very expensive to fix. Many people just kind of remove that servo braking system. So out of all the bikes, this is the heaviest one. And now let me take you over here to the 2008. So this is actually the lightest, even lighter than the newest models here. So both of these G these old GSs, I have about almost 100,000 miles on them. They've been all over. Uh, so this bike here is not an adventure, it's just a GS. And this one's coming in at about a wet weight of about 530 pounds. Um, it's been an excellent bike. It does have the electronic uh, suspension and everything. Never had an issue with it. We have had to put a new drive shaft on this bike at about, oh, I want to say it was like around 60,000 miles. And now this is bringing us to the new 2019 R1250 GS HP. So a big reason why I picked this bike up, I do have a Touareg over here, a middleweight, which I absolutely love. Put about 12,000 miles on that this summer. So I picked up the new GS as you can tell, I'm kind of a big GS fanboy, and I just love the power that this new GS puts out. So this new 1250 is at about 136 horsepower compared to that old GS is at about 85 horsepower. This 2008 here, we're looking at about probably 109 horsepower. So very powerful. And what I loved about this bike is it had all the little extras. So the clear water lights, Tour Tech everything, Tour Tech C to Kropovich exhaust here, headers, fast way, pegs. I mean, this bike easily has, uh, or even Option 719. These, it's so crazy. These cost about $900, these Option 719 mirrors. I would never pay that much, but I'm happy someone else did. So I could, you know, pick up a whole, uh, kind of kitted out bike. I only paid 21,000 out the door for this bike, which is kind of wild because with all of these accessories, I'm sure this was up around 30 grand, if not more. So let's get the elephant out of the room. Yes, these are all very heavy, heavy bikes. They're heavyweight motorcycles, adventure motorcycles. This, they are not a 450 pound middleweight Touareg. All right. So after you kind of you know, get that off your shoulders. You know that these are all in the mid 500, uh, that weight range. Once you get past that, they they can be a lot of fun. Now, are they a dirt bike? Absolutely not. Are they a middleweight adventure bike? No, but the thing is, is if you have the skill and the means to, you know, be getting on a big heavyweight adventure bike, because they, they can be expensive, um, they are amazing. As you can tell, I've I wouldn't have purchased a third one uh, if I didn't think they were awesome. So one of my favorite things about BMW, the BMW brand, the dealership network is amazing. And not only the dealerships, but these bikes are extremely reliable. And I know people are like, okay, come on a BMW. No, these bikes, they're probably one of the most reliable um, manufactured or manufacturers out there, BMW, especially these GSs. Now, they're nowhere near probably like maybe a Honda or a Kawasaki, but for a luxury uh, touring and adventure bike, I would have to say these BMW GSs are kind of like, the, that's it's the top tier more than a Triumph or um, really anything else. 
So what I absolutely love about these bikes is that they are so smooth and they're like little tractors off-road. Um, uh, extremely, extremely stable. They are very easy bikes to ride. The only time that these bikes are not fun is when you're picking them up in mud or if you're getting into really steep things, um, steep, uh, rocky kind of downhill, uphill things. That's where something much lighter like a, my Touareg over here is going to outperform. But what I really love about these is if you're gonna jump on the freeway and you go across a couple states and then you wanna hit up some back roads and have all of your gear and just be super comfortable, that's where these bikes are really awesome. So there's not really one bike that just does everything amazingly, I mean, you know, everyone tries to find that unicorn bike, but where I'm very lucky is I do have the space to have multiple motorcycles and it's like, not one bike is gonna do everything perfect. So that's why you have your dirt bikes, you have your lightweight uh, motorcycles, middleweight, the heavyweights. Um, they're all just a bit different. So let's say that you are new to motorcycling. Um, obviously the allure of these Beamers, uh, it, it's pretty heavy, right? I mean, you see them in the media and marketing and all of that. There's been movies about them going around the world. So everyone ha thinks like, okay, if I'm gonna get into adventure motorcycling, I gotta go, I gotta go get the 500 plus pound BMW GS, right? Well, if that's the case for you, if you are new to the sport, I would definitely actually shy away from starting with one of these big heavyweights, especially if you're a brand new rider and you're looking to go off-road. So if that's the case, I would actually go with something like this, like the Touareg 660, or maybe let's say a Tenere 700, or even a Honda Rally. Those little Honda Rally bikes are really awesome. They're also really affordable, um, super light. So if you are learning and you're going to be going off road and you're getting uh, into the sport, it's a new thing for you definitely go with the lightest bike possible. Um, suspension is everything. Uh, I've, I think people think of the engine and the, how powerful it is and they're like, that's the bike I wanna go with, but really suspension, just suspension is everything on an adventure motorcycle. You can have all the power in the world, but if you have a shitty suspension, you're not going very far or you're not going very far comfortably. Now, if you're looking to get into the BMW GSs and uh, you're looking at the different models, the oil cool, that old, let's say the 1150s, the 1200s, the new 1250 water cooled. Um, the, what I would tell you is that if you are looking to save quite a bit of money and you do, let's say you can't afford a new, the 1250 GS or you just don't want to spend that much, I would definitely go with a 2008 on up. Now, why 2008? So the 2008s, um, that was a really big change for BMW GSs. They shed about 60 pounds versus my old, that 2003 you saw, those 1150 GSs. Now, the, uh, those are two different bikes. That 1150 I have is a GS Adventure. The 1200 air-cooled is a GS. Now, that's another thing that comes into play here. If you are looking for something, you know, a bit more nimble, definitely go with the GS versus the GS Adventure. Now the GS Adventure, you get the extra fuel capacity. You can probably go, my old 1150 GS, about 230 miles, let's say, on a tank of gas, fully loaded, you're ripping and everything. Now, uh, that, that is the downfall, the having the, you know, less weight on the 2008 GS, like 106, I've ran out of gas around 160 miles, um, but it all depends on how you're riding it. You can easily get up around, let's say 180, 190, um, but you better have some extra fuel on you. Now, when it comes to suspension, the I really do believe the 1150, my GSA, um, versus that 2008 with the electronic suspension, those suspensions are, it's splitting hairs. That old 2003 suspension is really, really excellent. Um, we've never done anything to it. It's a 2003 with now about 100,000 miles, never touched the suspension other than we did put new fork seals up in the front an excellent suspension. That bike still run. It's it still runs and sounds probably like it did off the showroom floor. The bike runs excellent. 
Now the 2008, it does have the electronic suspension. So you have like the sport mode and the rain mode and all of that works really well. But the new 2019, the R1250 GSA, uh, the GS, I'm not, I'm sorry, just GS, not GSA. Uh, with the electronic suspension blows both of the bikes out of the water. I, every time I ride it, I'm just like, wow. Especially when I start getting off road, the bike feels so good. That suspension, I, especially for a stock suspension, it's not a tour tech add-on plug-in or whatever. Um, right from BMW, I am super, 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 super impressed. Um, however, I have heard that these new electronic suspensions are a failing point. You can get the Tour Tech plug and play systems. I'm going to just kind of run with it and until the system fails, then I'll put an updated system on it. But I am super impressed by the new 2019 or, or probably it's probably all of the new water cooled bikes have a similar system. That new suspension is really excellent. Now they are all telelever suspensions. Um, some people say they don't love them. They feel more vague off road. They, to me, it's kind of like um, a jack of all trades, but not really excellent at anything. It does feel a bit more vague than let's say a normal setup like the Touareg has. Um, especially off-road or even on street when you're getting uh, really, you know, into the corners and everything. But I will say the stability that you get from the GS and that telelever suspension is worth all of maybe the vagueness that you may feel. So if you're interested in uh, these old GSs and my, my uh, GS collection, please uh, like and subscribe. Write your comments down below if you have any. And I look forward to talking with you in the next video. Bye.